The Wisconsin Badgers kick off college football season in just seven days. What rooms have gotten better? Did the running back room get better despite losing Braylon Allen? Let's break it down here on today's Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good evening and thank you for enjoying it with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports at just six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Look, we got to talk about the Wisconsin Badgers football team because I've been teasing it for a little bit too long. I've been on other shows talking about the Wisconsin Badgers football team. But now we're going to dig in. We're going to dig in here on the next few shows to the Wisconsin Badgers. And I got a preview on what that's going to look like a little bit later on in the show, how we're going to do it, break down a little bit of the upcoming schedule for you. But let's start with the big question. The three rooms that Wisconsin improved the most this offseason are what? Is running back number one? Although you lost Braylon Allen to the NFL draft, is running back still the most improved room in the offseason? I think we have reason to believe that the running back position will, as a whole, be more productive for Wisconsin this year than it was a season ago. You lacked real depth last year behind Ches Malusi and Braylon Allen. Jackson Aker was there, still there. Katie Akimeli was there, still there. But neither one of those two are equipped to really shoulder a big load, and there was nobody else equipped to get touches beyond those two. That's the difference this season. You have other players beyond the already existing depth who may warrant getting touches. So first of all, uh, the room is improved by bringing back Ches Malusi. Last season, freak injury, broke his leg. In four games, he was averaging six yards per carry. Looked like he was having an absolute career renaissance. Looked fantastic. His highest average yards per carry since his freshman year. Toby Walker joins the room now. Transfer running back out of Oklahoma. I didn't totally believe that he could be a 1B to the Chez 1A. I wanted to see it. Oklahoma fans told us that they thought he may have been the best running back on the Sooners roster last year and just didn't get enough opportunity. Well, they may have been right because looking at how Tui Walker runs in camp, it's not just that he could be a 1B to Ches Malusi. He might be the 1A. He's really impressive. He, he wasn't a, a full, full workhorse, but he got 513 carries in 12 games last year, averaged five yards per carry. I wanted to see more coming, coming into the fall, and, and we got more. He, he delivered in fall camp so far. And... If Ches Malusi, who although clearly seems fully healthy, fully ready to go, is going to have a compliment to his 1A, that is fantastic. I think will help him get through a full season, which has been a difficulty for him, even if some of it is a freak injury, like having to reconstruct his darn leg because he broke his leg, which is, that's not, that's not something that happens just because a guy is injury prone. That's a thing that just happens. But beyond that, you, you have those existing reserves, right? You have Jackson Aker, the converted fullback, who I think complements this room, and I'll get to that a little bit later, as well as Katie Akamele. But, I mean, technically behind them, but maybe, maybe before the season's, or before the season's done, ahead of them. Darian Dupree, four-star running back talent, true freshman. Dylan Jones. Four-star running back, true freshman. You brought in three running backs in this class. We aren't even really going to mention Gideon Atuka because I don't think he's going to crack the depth chart this year. But, man, Darian Dupree is making plays every time he touches the ball in fall camp. And Dylan Jones looks pretty dang good, too. Pair that with your existing depth. With... Katie Akamili, who rushed for 4.6 yards per attempt last season on 36 attempts. 
you know, fine, fine. Particularly if he's a depth piece on this team. You have Jackson Aker. In, in a world where the tight end room lacks depth, something we'll get into a little bit more on a future show, I think. A hybrid H-back role for Jackson Aker, the converted fullback. That could be a really nice compliment to the rest of the room. Look at Nate White. Nate White, who was the number one recruit in the state of Wisconsin in his 2023 class. He's been pushed out of this room entirely. Whether that has more to say about Nate White or has more to say about the running back room entirely, I think we can debate it. But I think it has at least something to say about the quality of, of talent in the running back room. And so when you are able to get back your, you know, 1B to Braylon's 1A from injury, you bring in another guy who might take that 1A role. Now, not necessarily from a top end elite level like Braylon Allen had, not necessarily. Have the existing depth behind them, but then have what I think is a higher ceiling of true freshmen coming in who might challenge that existing depth for carries. This might be the most improved room uh, on the roster compared to last season, if only because we know it's going to have to make an impact because that offense really needed to improve. And if Tyler Van Dyke isn't going to be what the Wisconsin Badgers need him to be on offense, we could get some real big contributions from the running back room, potentially. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. And I, I don't know why I keep swinging my hand around. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you're watching us on, on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scani six pack. Uh, if you're listening on the audio platform, you can find us there. Uh, linked in the podcast description as well, wherever you listen to podcasts. So I think the first place in terms of overall depth and maybe more proven depth is that inside linebacker. And if it's not running back, I think that inside linebacker is the most improved positional unit on this Wisconsin football team headed into the 2024 season. I think it is probably inside linebacker number one. I think you can make the argument for running back at number two. I think you could also make the next room that I'm, I'm going to say, uh, third room, an argument for number two. But I think inside linebacker is probably a clear, clear one, clear enough. This is a room that went from a real problem a season ago to honestly a strength with actual depth of ill where there really was not a season ago. The leading tacklers on your team a season ago started with Hunter Wool at safety with 120 tackles. Your second leading tackler is Jake Cheney from this inside linebacker room with 80. 40 fewer tackles compared to Hunter Wooler. And yes, Hunter Wooler does a lot of different things than playing a traditional free safety role. But I don't want Hunter Wooler being the leading tackler on this team by a large margin. That means the inside linebackers have failed to do their job. That means that players in a lot of places on the field have failed to do their job. If Hunter Wooler is the leading tackler on this team again this year, it's, again, not going to be a very fun year, I don't think. So... What do you do to improve this room where you came to expect the inside linebackers to be your leading tackler? Like Mumajong Meta was two seasons ago, right? Was primed to be that again for this team. Well, you lost Mumajong Meta as an undrafted free agent to the Bengals. And you lost Jordan Turner, your other starter in this unit, to Michigan State. Well, that kind of stinks. Captain for Michigan State for the Spartans now. Kind of stinks. But you get Jake Cheney back, who did have the second most tackles on this team a season ago and might be your third best player on the defensive side of the ball after Hunter Roller and Ricardo Holman. I think so. You also return Christian Allegro 
who can really fly around the field as we saw last year in his redshirt fr uh, freshman season. Or in his true freshman season, rather. His redshirt freshman this year because he only saw four games of action. Um, I believe that's correct. Three-star talent out of Connecticut. He was held out of the last few practices at camp with an injury, so I guess we'll see uh, in the next few days, maybe during Luke Fickle's upcoming press conference on Monday, what that what, what that looks like for him, what his game status might be. I, I suspect we won't really learn until uh, game time against Western Michigan. You also retained Tyler Jancy. We saw in four games on special teams last season, uh, but the staff is telling everybody that they feel good about his ability to contribute to this team this year. Okay. So we get it. You lost Muba Jung Meta, who had a disappointing season last year. You lost Jordan Turner, and I think that hurts a little bit. But you kept Jake Cheney. You kept some young pieces that you're excited about. What'd you gain? Did your gains make up for your losses? Um, Arguably, you gained Jaheim Thomas who was a starting linebacker at Arkansas a season ago. Before that, he played three seasons at Cincinnati. So he's familiar with Luke Fickle. He's familiar with Mike Trussell. Racked up some tackles in the SEC. 11 games, 40 solo tackles, 88 total tackles, four tackles for loss, and three and a half sacks. Now, there was some complaints about his tackling ability. I know some folks like the folks at Pro Football Focus didn't like it. Some other local beat writer, writers didn't love it. He was kind of shoved to the side at the end of the year. There, there was a real mass exodus uh, from Arkansas at the linebacker position as well. Some, some weird circumstances around that Arkansas linebacker room that make me maybe discount some of the negative reports that we hear out of Arkansas. Maybe. But he was a four-star recruit in high school by the 24-7 Sports Composite. All right. Solid talent. Who, who is going to be starting on this team next to Jake Cheney? The behind them, you get Tackett Curtis, who I think is probably the best transfer portal pickup for, for the Wisconsin Badgers this offseason. Potentially. Potentially. He has three years of eligibility remaining. He was a fringe top 100 recruit nationally, four-star recruit in the high school and in the portal, top 10 inside linebacker in his class. He's got real speed, real twitch, ability to contribute to, to this room that really needs some young guys to start stepping up. And, and so with Gene Thomas and with Tackett Curtis, even if Jake Cheney wasn't returning, I would probably still feel pretty good about the state of the inside linebacker room. They have real depth options, but, uh, with Christian Allegro and Tyler Jancy, and then Jaheim Thomas and Tackett Curtis as potential starters, and you don't have to start Tackett Curtis. I think that's really awesome. And having a depth of options here actually really, really, really helps Mike Trussell because Mike Trussell is not a guy who is ideologically tied to a 3-4 scheme, to a 4-3 scheme, to a two-down lineman scheme, no, nothing like that, 2-4-5. We saw, oh, sorry, I hit my mic. <laughs> we saw lineups in camp where he had three inside linebackers on the field. The, the versatility of options at inside linebacker is going to help this defense be better and help Mike Tressel figure out how to get his 11 best players on the field. That is exciting. The th number three, I, I don't necessarily know that it ranks third, but you, you could put any of these in any order and I'd probably listen to an argument. But my third room that I believe is the most improved for the Wisconsin Badgers this offseason is the outside linebackers. And this is where, look, I think getting Tackett Curtis was big. I think getting Jaheim Thomas was big for the inside linebackers. I think getting Twee Walker was big. I think getting uh, Tyler Van Dyke was big. But the outside linebackers, I think, is potentially where Luke Fickle made the most of his opportunities in the transfer portal. Because getting these edge rushers is hard. It is really hard to do in the portal. And I am 
impressed with what they managed to do in the portal despite that difficulty. And there's a really nice combination of in-program ads and a pair of transfer portal additions. So first of all, in the outside linebacker room this season, you lost CJ Getz. You lost him due to eligibility. He leaves you after racking up 11 tackles for loss last year. That's that's significant production. But you do return your basically only other major contributor, <laughs> right? So this was this was a room that was not great a year ago. You did not have many contributors. So the fact that we're going to talk about being excited about several guys here says just how more, much work was in the offseason. You return Daryl Peterson, who had 10 tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. He has played a bit all over in camp on the edge, moving some inside on the defensive line as well. Something I think that they're going to continue to do, especially given the James Thompson Jr. injury. Sorry, I jinxed it. I, I think they're going to have to continue to make Daryl Peterson a little bit more, more versatile. But again, we'll get to that on another episode that we'll preview shortly. So who else did you gain? If you lost one of your two major contributors from the room, you better have, you better have done something. Well, you have some internal gains. And, and first is Aaron Witt, who, if you are a Wisconsin Padres fan and you have been following the personnel on the football team beyond who you see on game day, uh, you have been burned by Aaron Witt before. You have been burned by the hopes, the dreams of seeing Aaron Witt uh, playing on Saturdays many, many times. A guy who has seen very, very, very few snaps because of recurring injuries, very few snaps even in camps because of injuries keeps happening. But right now he seems to be healthy, healthy enough. I know he got like a little bit banged up, but the staff really shrugged that off and said, no, we don't think it's a big deal. They'll be back. Don't worry. And I'm inclined to believe them. People who've seen him play say he's an athletic freak. He can ball out. That's big addition. If he can stay healthy, if he can stay healthy and you, you can play him uh, on the field. In, in a reserve role as a rotational piece. That's that's really big for this team. You also have a couple of true freshmen, and, and this is where I think this becomes the third most improved room on the team because you do have some injury concerns between Aaron Witt and then injury concerns with the freshmen, and also they are freshmen. Thomas Heiberger who looked like he was in line to play for this team this year, suffered a season-ending injury in fall camp. So that's really rough. You do get Anilu Lafayette, the four-star edge rusher out of Hawaii, the same high school that Nick Herbig attended. I think we know that Wisconsin can create edge rushers from Hawaii. I think we've seen that recipe for success before. There's also Ernest Willer, who has moved here from the defensive line into the outside linebacker room. I don't know if that's going to stick or not. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> so who do you gain from outside of the program? Because it, if you retained one half of your major contributors and your others are an oft injured Aaron Witt, a done for the season Thomas Heiberger and then Anelu Lafayette and a converted uh, defensive lineman. You better have gotten some good transfers to to convince me that this should be one of the three most improved uh, position groups this offseason for the Wisconsin Badgers football team. And I think you did get a couple of really impressive transfer portal ads. And I'll I'll start I'll start with who I think is a little bit less impressive uh, because I, I'm really impressed with the second guy and I, and I want to mention him. The first is Leon Lowry, who is the transfer out of Syracuse. If you were following along earlier this year, he is the guy with the NL NIL agent where we got into some shenanigans on the website, formerly known as Twitter, but he ended up at Wisconsin. I think he's a solid contributor and he's one of these guys that has pushed Daryl Peterson for playing time immediately. I think that's big, right? There was an opportunity for playing time. He presented himself as an option for it. That's all you can ask. Who I am excited to see is John Pius. 
And I know that if you've seen me on other shows, I have at times seemingly besmirched the lower levels of football. I always follow it up with like, there is good football at every level. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to sing a little bit of the praises of a guy who is transferring up from the FCS level because there is good football at every level, even at William and Mary. John Pius, in his three seasons at FCS William and Mary, ended second in program history with 40 and a half tackles for loss in three seasons. He also had 24 and a half sacks in three seasons. He was first team FCS All American and was named to the Senior Bowl watch list, which really caught my eye because the Senior Bowl scouting team is really good. If you're a Green Bay Packers fan, we know the Packers love their Senior Bowl guys. They really trust the Senior Bowl scouting process. I think the Senior Bowl scouting process is really good. They find guys like these. And, and so for John Pius to have been named to that Senior Bowl watch list a year ago at the FCS level tells me that there, there is something. There's some, something to this. And he is another one of these guys who actually is pushing and clearly has cracked the two deep, right? He's going to be a rotational piece. I don't necessarily think either Leon Lowry or John Pius is going to be a world beater. And I think Pius might really be a second team rotate in option, but it's clearly an improvement over what was here before based on the fact that you had your two starters and just nothing else. You at least have three pieces that I think you feel really good about. And after that, you can kind of figure it out with some of these true freshmen, some of these converted defensive linemen. Ernest Willer might really be something. Uh, I, I think there's reason to be excited there. I think there's a real reason to be excited about Anelu Lafayette. He, he is fast. He's he is twitchy. He, he, he should be fun to watch on the edge, uh, given that he plays. But I, I would love to see what John Pius does. Uh, this is kind of the the heartwarming college football story that, that should make you happy. Um, so these are my top three most improved rooms for the Wisconsin Badgers football team headed into the 2024 season coming up this week on the show. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here, but you are going to hear my voice. You are going to be able to watch me on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. Cause I'm going to go hang out on the beach for 10 days. I did try to get a vacation in under the gun before the Western Michigan football game. Then they decided to move the kickoff to Friday. Would a responsible person say, okay, I will also move my vacation up one day. Maybe, maybe they would. Maybe they would. I am not that person. I extended my trip by three days out of defiance. I will not bow down to college football playing on Friday nights. I refuse. I refuse. You will, you will see me after Labor Day. Um, however, we do have shows already recorded. So you're going to get to see some shows uh, featuring me, featuring some guests uh, coming up this week. So this show publishing on Friday evening, the 23rd, we will have a second part of this show talking about the three rooms that I think need the most improvement, the three rooms with the most to prove heading into the 2024 season for the Wisconsin Badgers football team. That will publish and be in your feed on Monday. We have a recruiting primer, a, um, a, a, a catch up on the Wisconsin Badgers football teams recruiting over this past summer with a very special guest uh, from one of my colleagues over at Athlon Sports uh, that will publish in your feed on Tuesday. We have a special surprise for you on Wednesday with another special guest. Uh, Thursday, then we are going to talk about the Badgers football game against Western Michigan. Uh, Friday, we will predict game results, MVPs, three wishes maybe. Hit the microphone again uh, for the Wisconsin Badgers football season as a whole. And then the following Monday, we will have another episode in your feed uh, doing the same kind of thing, a, a bigger prediction for the Green Bay Packers season. Not going to have game recaps in your feed. Not going to get back to you about preseason shenanigans for, for the Green Bay Packers uh, out of that preseason game because I'm not going to be here to see it. I, I guess I'm going to have to guess what wide receivers make the roster for, for the Green Bay Packers um, because roster cuts are going to be on the 27th. And 
I want to get an episode out to you. E even if it's on Labor Day, I want to get it out to you. I want to get it out to you. Uh, but I will be back in the United States uh, late Monday evening, uh, ready to go Tuesday. Might try to put another show in the hopper for Tuesday uh, so that I can potentially get out to media availability Tuesday morning in Madison. But that is that is the plan moving forward. So be here, tuned in to the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts or watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. To get the latest updates in Wisconsin sports, you can follow me, your host, Kedrick Stumbrus, at Kedrick Stumbrus on the website, formerly known as Twitter, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack to get notified as soon as we publish new stuff into your feed. I have new stories up covering the Wisconsin Badgers on Athlon Sports right now, and you can find those pieces published in the podcast description. Also, while you're hanging around, check out Snap the Pigskin, the NFL podcast I publish weekly with my friend Noah Clark. Uh, we published the AFC and NFC West previews this past week. We will be publishing the AFC and NFC North previews a uh, week ahead. You can catch that wherever you are either watching or listening to this show. You can find our full division breakdowns wherever you are listening to this show ahead of the NFL season. That show is a lot of fun. Really enjoy doing that with Noah Clark. So stay tuned to the feed. We're going to be back on Monday with three positions with the most to prove this season for Wisconsin football. Until we talk to you then on Wisconsin.